Morning. Morning. Good to see you here today. And I'm really glad that we can get together and praise God. It's the highlight of the week. Do you know anybody that's not afraid to do anything? That they'll take any challenge. They'll do whatever it is. Do you ever wonder if they're bold or just crazy? I remember in high school I had an acquaintance. He was a couple years older than me. He always used to tell us, I cannot wreck. And he drove like a maniac. He says, I can't wreck. I've tried. One night there was six of us piled into his Toyota Celica. And we're driving on a very curvy road. And I mean, we're hitting 100 five miles an hour or better. And he's just going along, I just can't wreck, I try. He said, the force is with me. And I said, we hit that bank, the force is going to be with us. I said, it's going to happen. But yeah, he was crazy, no doubt in my mind. But yet, sometimes, you have to be a little one to be the other. The reading today is about the widow that went to a judge's house day after day to, to pester him about giving her justice. And he gave her justice because of her persistence. He understood she's going to wear me down. But you know, she's not the only one that walked this fine line between boldness and crazy. So I want to look at some people who had bold, crazy faith. First of all, there was the centurion. This centurion approaches Jesus. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5 says, When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Two things here. A centurion is a Roman soldier. He's not even a Jew. Jesus was sent to the Jews according to what he said. And he is the one that many of the Jews looked at as their conquering, victorious king. And this Roman soldier comes to him. But I want you to notice how he addresses Jesus in verse 6. He says, Lord, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. I mean, think about it. What reason or what right does this Roman soldier have to approach this Jewish rabbi and ask for such a big favor to request of him? I mean, what would give him the idea that, that I can go to this Jesus who has this reputation as a healer? What thinks I can go to him and he'll listen to me? He is either bold or crazy. But one thing's for sure, he had bold, crazy faith. Friends, if we're going to be the Christians God calls us to be, we've got to possess that bold, crazy faith. Pays off. Jesus agrees to the request. Jesus doesn't turn him away. Verse 7, Matthew chapter 8 says, Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. See, Jesus sees the faith of this man and he's going to reward that faith by granting his request, by healing his servant. And this is a great display of unconditional love. Jesus didn't care who he was. He didn't care what his background was. He didn't care what he did. Friends, I'm going to tell you, crazy faith breeds crazy love. 
I'm talking about having the faith that you truly believe in anything. But then, the centurion makes another request. The centurion did not feel worthy to have Jesus come to his house. So his request is simple. In, in verse 8, the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Friends, this is amazing. This is amazing. Do you have that kind of faith in Jesus? Just say the word. Just say the word and it will be done. I mean, that's crazy faith. Remember Naaman back in the Old Testament. He didn't have that crazy faith. When he went to see Elisha and he wouldn't come down and wave his hands or whatever, he was afraid that it was a useless trip until his servant said, he just told you to go wash in the Jordan seven times. And he sent his servant down to do it. Just try it. What can it hurt? And he found out that if he did it, it worked. Crazy faith. We don't have to be able to logically explain everything God asked us to do. Because God defies logic. God is above it. Why do I have to get into the waters of baptism to be saved? I don't know. But God said, this is what I want you to do. It symbolizes a washing. Because we're visual people. we got to see something. We understand what a bath does, don't we? So we come up out of the waters clean. We understand that. But it's an act of obedience. Why does God want me to love my enemies? That's hard. But God does it. God loves my enemies. And He's not asking me to do anything beyond what He does. We just got to have that bold, crazy faith that allows us to accept what He tells us to do and to do it. And after Jesus compliments this, this crazy faith that this man possesses, I want you to notice Matthew 8 and verse 13, but not on that slide, over here. I guess I missed it. But in Matthew 8 and verse 13, then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. We could stop right there and say, man, that is some bold, crazy faith. He approached Jesus and said, look, I know you've got the power. You don't even have to come and be in the same vicinity. You just have to say the word. And Jesus did. Now, the bleeding lady, we know the story. She'd been bleeding for 12 years. She had tried everything to cure her issue. She had ran through all of her money trying to pay the doctors to find out why this was happening, why she couldn't stop the bleeding. We, we know that, that she struggled. Mark chapter 5 and verse 26 says, She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Have you ever done that with a doctor? Spent a bunch of money going to the doctor, going to many doctors, and instead of getting better, you get worse? You're not alone. This lady did it too. But she spent all that she had. She put her faith in, in what she thought she could do. So now she's at, at a dead end, she thinks. What can I do? To whom can I turn? She displays some crazy faith. She remembers hearing about this man named Jesus. 
She remembers hearing about the great things that he's done for other people, the power of his healing. And better yet, she remembered hearing, he's in town today. He's near. And she needed to see him. She wanted to get to him. Mark chapter 5 verse 28 says, She thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Again, she's thinking, he don't even have to see me. He don't have to say anything to me. He don't have to address me personally. Nothing. All I have to do is touch his clothes and I will be healed. Friends, that's crazy. That's crazy to think. And all I have to do is touch his clothes. Isn't it? Friends, that's a display of some crazy faith. That's being bold. And so what she do? She fights her way through this crowd. She gets to Jesus. I mean, you think about that. A lot of times we, we get somewhere and... We see a crowd, we think, eh, I'll come back later. Not her. She fights her way through this crowd, this, this city street, this, this bunch with people wanting to see Jesus. And we get, we know, we can tell from, from the text that it's this elbow to elbow, people pushing and shoving. You ever been in a crowd like that? Or you can barely move? Go to the airport, the TSA. People pushing and shoving, trying to get ahead. But she gets to Jesus. She reaches out. And she touches the hem of his garment. And she is immediately healed. Her faith had been rewarded. Mission accomplished. Ah, but Jesus wasn't done with her. Jesus wasn't finished. He stops and he says, Who touched me? Now Peter thinks Jesus is crazy. What are you talking about? There's people pushing up against you and shoving and touching you. What do you mean, who touched me? He says, well, I know somebody touched me. I felt the power go out of me. Now the lady's embarrassed. This crazy faith that she once had starting to shrink. And so when she realized that this wasn't just going to go away, she finally, it was me. It was me. So Jesus calls her out, not to embarrass her, but to make this a teachable moment. To show the people, look at this woman, look at what she did to get to me. That's the kind of faith you need to have. Whatever it takes to get to me. Nobody ever said that Christianity was going to be easy. Nobody ever said that getting to Jesus was going to be easy. Oh, I mean, we have access to the Bible. We can look at that. We can read it. We can be baptized in any number of places. But having the bold, crazy faith to get to Jesus and stay there, that's a little bit more difficult. Because there's always something trying to draw us away. There are many, many lessons in this story. However, Jesus tells this woman why she was healed in Mark chapter 5 and verse 34. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your sufferings. Notice he didn't say, by my power you're healed. He says, your faith has healed you. Was it by the power of Jesus? Oh, yeah. 
But it was that woman's faith in that power. It's just like when people say that, that our salvation is by grace. That's true, but it's you are saved by grace through faith. Because we believe. And so we do what we're told to do in order to inherit eternal life. I mean, the Bible tells us we're heirs with Jesus. God has written us into the will, so to speak. And it's our job to stay there. It's our job to have that bold, crazy faith that we believe no matter what, God is with us. God is going to reward us. God is going to get us through anything. Daughter, son, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Friends, it don't matter what we're going through. We put that kind of faith in God. We will be freed from our suffering. Because we know. We know that God is the one holding us in His hand. And then one of my favorites are the four friends of the paralytic. Jesus, again, is in Capernaum. And he's in a house teaching. And the crowd is overflowing. You couldn't even get to the door, let alone through the door. There's people everywhere as Jesus is teaching and healing. Jesus is probably at the height of his popularity at this point. And when everybody heard Jesus was going to be in town, that's where they were going to be. We're going to go be part of that. Luke explains to us the real reason so many people would show up in chapter 5 and verse 17. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Hey, this Jesus is coming to town and he can heal the sick. He can make the lame walk. He can make the blind see. He can make the deaf hear. When we lived in Alabama, we used to go up to Huntsville from Oneonta and going up the state highway, we'd go through this little town and they had a little church there. There was a big banner that hung out in front of this little church. Healing service every Tuesday night. That place was packed every Tuesday night. You know why? People believed that they was going to get healed. Now, I never went, so I don't know if anybody ever did. But what I do know, when people have faith, they will do what it takes to get what they want. So here, people had heard that Jesus is coming. They knew his reputation. They knew what he could do. So these four men, they're carrying their, their friend on a mat to go see Jesus to be healed. But we can't even get to the door. Let alone get to Jesus. We can't even get in the house. So they come up with a crazy idea. Mark chapter 2 and verse 4 says, Since they could not get him to the Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, they lowered the man or the mat, and the paralyzed man was laying on. Now I want you to imagine this is your house. You got all these people in there, and the next thing you see is a hole appearing in your roof. But these guys had so much faith, just like the bleeding woman, if we can just get him to Jesus, if we can just get him to Jesus, he will be healed. And we are going to do whatever it takes. Let 
I mean, they could have looked at that and said, ah, maybe next time. Now we're going to the roof. We're going to go to the roof and we're going to let this guy down. I mean, this is a lot of work. I mean, first of all, getting this guy up to the roof, then realize it's probably a thatch roof. I understand that. But still, you're digging through that. And then you're going to lower this guy down. What happens if somebody lowers faster than the other one? And the one corner drops. You know, they had to work together and they had to have this crazy faith. These men were not going to be denied in getting their friend to Jesus. Friends, that's a kind of display of faith that we need to have in getting our friends to Jesus. We need to live Jesus so they see it. We can't be denied. Their crazy faith is rewarded. Mark chapter 2 and verse 5, When Jesus saw their faith, He said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. One thing I want you to notice here that probably most of us as we read this, I mean, we know this story. We knew what was going to happen. But as we read this, I think a lot of us overlook when Jesus saw their faith. You know what that means? Faith is meant to be displayed. Not just to say I have faith, but we've got to show it. And these men did. They showed it because they knew if they could just get this man to Jesus, he would be healed. And he was. Now, the teachers of the law accused Jesus of blasphemy because they're sitting there amongst themselves and saying, who can forgive sins but God alone? And this guy says his sins are forgiven? And so they're talking amongst themselves. And Jesus, even though these Pharisees and these teachers of the law are quietly speaking and condemning and criticizing, Jesus knows their hearts and he rebukes them publicly. He calls them out. And this crazy faith has a great effect. Mark chapter 2 and verse 12. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, We have never seen anything like this. Friends, crazy faith is going to have a great effect. When people display crazy faith, it's going to help other people become bold and have crazy faith. I read a story here a while back of a, a man that had started a, a church basically for skaters. Said there was a lot of young men that would ride their skateboards and some of them have actually said, we've been kicked out of churches. Friends, it's sad, but that does happen. And so he, he had rented this building in order to meet and have services. And he had taken out a six-month lease on it. Well, come down to six months, and he still didn't have any money to continue on. And so he challenged everybody he knew. He said, I'm going to draw a circle up here <clears throat> in the stage. And I'm going to stay in that until we get enough money for next month's rent. He said, no, I'm not challenging you. I'm challenging you to pray to God to send us a miracle. He said, I'm challenging you to have faith that moves mountains. And so the circle was drawn. He went in. And there he sat for 28 days. For 28 days. On day 29, 
he got great news. Some didn't think it was so great. Look, we're not going to renew your lease. We don't think that we're wanting to do that. Guy said, well, I got two more days. Because we're going to give you this building to meet in. You're doing such a great job. The neighborhood's being cleaned up and these kids are such a great influence on everybody else around. We're not going to give you a lease. We're going to give you the building. Friends, that's crazy faith. That's believing in God can do anything. Anything. Brothers and sisters, we have no reason to be timid in our faith. We've seen God do amazing and great things. And we know the Bible tells us nothing is impossible for Him. So what reason do we have to be timid in our faith? I know sometimes we feel like, well, you know, we can't challenge God. We're God's children. Do your children ever challenge you? Say yes. They have. But when we look at God and those who had the best relationships with Him, think of Moses. Did Moses ever challenge God? Once again, say yes. God, you promised me if your people done this, you would do this. It's time for you to hold up your end of the bargain. God, you can't destroy these people because then people back there where we came from are going to say, oh, he couldn't lead his people out. So you've got to help them. Abraham, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, God, if you can find 50 righteous people down there, will you save it? Yes. 40? Yes. 30? Yes. 20? Yes. 10? Yes. That's bold. That's bold to, to look at God and say, God, this is what I want. And friends, that's what God wants. He wants us to be bold. To understand we have crazy faith. Not to be disrespectful. Not to be irreverent toward Him. But to be bold and have the faith that we know and we demonstrate He can do anything. When Jesus saw their faith. See, if we desire to accomplish big things in life, especially in our walk with God, we need to have great vision and dream big. We need to be bold and have crazy faith. I mean, you're only going to accomplish that which you envision. It has been said, if you can think it, you can do it. But in all honesty, it should say, if you can think it, God can do it. Because God can do more, abundantly more, according to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, than we can ask or imagine. That's how big and powerful our God is. So let us demonstrate our crazy faith. Not only will it lift us up, but it will lift up others around us. And the world around us will be amazed when they see the great things that God can and will do if we allow Him to work in our life. So if you're here today and you've never been immersed for mission of sins, show some crazy faith and tell God, I do want to walk with you. I want you to take away my sins. And I want to be obedient. And you can be baptized for remission of sins. Come out of the waters, perfect, brand new, washed clean. Do I know how? No, God does and God does it and that's all that matters. And I have faith in Him. Christian, maybe you've been struggling with your faith. Maybe you've been doubting the power of God. Go to God and tell Him, I want to have bold, crazy faith. Give me the things I need to have that faith, to be able to display it to the world, and most importantly, to you. Maybe you need the prayers of the church for something physical, something spiritual. Church would be glad to pray for you, for no matter what it is, because bold, crazy faith brings results. 
and God can do anything. Think about that as we stand and as we 